Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I wanted to talk about a long-listed book on the Giller Prize, which is a fairly big deal. There's three biggish deals, although there's tons of different uh, literacy awards in Canada. These ones are like the most well-known, at least. There's Canada Reads, there's the Governor General's Literacy Award, and then there's the Giller Prize, which is, I believe, um, a Scotiabank sponsored event, basically. The book that I want to talk about on the long list is Jordan Tannehill's The Listeners. I consume this on audio because all of the long list is really hard to get in my small town. We have a provincial library system where we can only order from other provincial stuff. So the funny thing about this prize is that it's long listed and then on October 5th, about a month after the long list is announced, the short list is announced. So you have not a lot of time to consume 10 or 12 books, something like that. So I'm doing my best. So far I've read Fight Night by Miriam Taus and then this book. <laughs> Those are the only books I've been able to get a hold of. Uh, eventually I hope to read all of them, but uh, it's definitely not going to be before the short list and probably I'll only be able to get a hold of like one or two more before the actual prize is actually announced but you never know i guess my hopefully my library is ordering these shortlisted and longlisted books if they get more copies in then hopefully i'll be bumped up the queue i ordered them right when the same day that the short list or the long list was announced and i'm still like back of the queue so we'll see uh before i talk about this book i want to briefly mention that Deborah Pearson uh, is the narrator for the book and she was phenomenal. I listened to a ton of audiobooks. There's only a couple narrators that beat out this one. It's literary fiction that is uh, contemporary and crosses over with horror elements and suspense. It's definitely a page turner though definitely leans towards literary and uh, it's about a wife who is a teacher, she's a feminist, she's got a strong backbone, she's pretty well read, she's intelligent, she's sort of like, I wouldn't say, maybe like a baseline for what you would expect a teacher to be, like intelligent, caring, empathetic, smart, um, somewhat bold. Uh, she teaches high school and one night in her family home, she has a daughter and a husband, she starts hearing a low hum and it doesn't go away. She ends up going and trying to find a solution to this, which she can't. The, uh, there's no normal explanation for what she is hearing uh, and it's persistent and always there. When she learns that one of her kids named Kyle in her school, uh, who's in her class, also hears the hum, uh, they form like a bond over this as nobody else can understand it and they feel ostracized and can't talk to anybody about it. Uh, they start concocting this plan where they're going around using a kind of microphone to measure different parts of the town to figure out where the hum is coming from. They think it's on a lower hurt band, I think is what it's called, where uh, only like dogs and other pets and stuff like that would be able to hear it possibly. But it also doesn't say that the um, pets in town or anything like that are going wild. And what ensues is basically a spiraling out of control of her life. It feels like it went from very curated to um, hectic, chaotic, unhinged. She doesn't have anyone except Kyle to confide in, but the relationship is fraught because it is not a professional one. And if other people were to see them around, they would assume uh, and jump to bad conclusions, basically. And what ends up happening is both of them find a group of people in town that are also hearing the hum. And it becomes a sort of, um, AA meeting like setup where only the people in the group kind of understand what is happening and it switches into like a detective-ish mode where they're trying to figure out 
what is the hum, uh, what they can do about it, practical solutions versus spiritual solutions. Well, there's no definitive answer. Everybody is trying to figure it out as well as the reader. And there's a lot of satisfaction there. But the really clever thing that this book does is it talks about intersectionality of marginalization with in-group and out-groups um, and classifying, making a new classification for a marginalized identity that doesn't exist now politically or otherwise. So the way that we're socialized is that as we grow up, especially in high school and junior high and from then on, we sort of codify our values and we form in-groups and out-groups. But by forming a new one in the fact that these people who hear the hum are a new out-group and not understood by society, uh, Tannehill really shines a light on how people are prejudiced to notions that they don't understand and how it's used to dehumanize people, how it's used to uh, control them and bring them into an in-group and make them uh, perform to um, a standard that is set by society. But even though it is a physiological thing that these people are hearing the hum, um, at least that's what they believe, they are still ostracized and shunned and made to feel like other um, marginalized groups. And so it, it's really easy for the reader to confront their own biases and to uh, not automatically sort these people into the in-group, out-groups that they already have in their own lives, whatever their political affiliations or beliefs. So it's just incredibly intersectional and smart on that front, but then you also have the detective uh, type aspect of it and it is subjective enough that it needs you as a reader to sort of pick a path. Do you believe her? Don't you believe her? Do you believe it's physiological or not? Do you believe it's uh, root cause is psychosomatic or otherwise? And so as you're sort of spiraling, so are the characters, especially the protagonists that we follow. And the fun thing about it is that it's in a memoir-like structure where um, she is pulling herself out of her own narrative, where she is commenting on those events that have happened as a retrospective, and then kind of presumes that these things are real world and should be taken seriously. So we can't automatically just sort of disassociate from what is happening or um, automatically sort it into fiction, even though at a conscious level we know that it is literary fiction. There's also these little reminders that needle us. And the funny thing is, is that, or maybe not funny, but an interesting thing, I think, is that the hum is a real thing. Like, you can, you can Google the hum and people have been hearing things like this all around the world. So there's some overlap there and it I don't know of any stories in which people um, are ostracized and and like spiral in such a ways in this literary fiction but um, for instance in my town a hum like this was driving me a little bit crazy when uh, the municipal building was being put up here it's they were like um, hitting some pipes or something like that and they were working during the evening because they wanted to get it done uh, not in winter so they were working like 24 7 on this thing and they had to get it done by a certain date because of uh, tax reason stuff and so when i was trying to sleep at like midnight or one or two or really early in the morning sometimes there would be this hum and it was when they were um digging or whatever into the ground so there's also been reports of these kind of things happening around um, power lines that are being put up or really high transference between power lines that are being um, put through a town and stuff like that. So some people are just more sensitive to that stuff. So it is kind of interesting that maybe Tannehill had seen a news story on something like this and then extrapolated it into what this book is. 
and so it is and is not rooted in real life. Also from a craft wise perspective it's just excellent. It's so good in uh, the prose work especially but characterizing all of these eclectic and interesting characters in the AA group um, of the people that are looking for help for the hum. There's it ranges from like conspiracy theorists that are right-wing people to um, really left-wing people to academics to anything you can think of basically. You also can't sort these people into ideological views as well. It does its best to make you hit a block, so to speak, in the fiction where you at some point as a reader have to reflect on what is happening to these people by their loved ones and their family and, and things like that and how the group dynamics unfold. And just the interactions between the people are so well done that it feels to the point of such good literary fiction where it feels like a universal experience, where uh, it feels like something that you've experienced as well when you've been in a similar situation where these people are interacting and they do quirky things, weird things, interesting things, or just like tell a particular joke and the different reactions by the different people. It's just so well realized that it feels like it must be true. Some of the most earnest interactions between the uh, the people are just so exquisite as well as some of the dialogue and just the the prose in general. It's such a incredible thing to hear even. It's a book that was obviously written to be read aloud because the narrator was just incredible with it as I said but I really want to get my hands on a physical copy and consume it just to have uh, these characters more vivid in my head basically. I think it's a stunning addition to the long-listed books and I am so glad that it was nominated. Uh, Tannehill's other book I've read is a play, uh, Botticelli in the Fire and Sodom in something, and that was a four-star read for me, whereas this is a five-star read. I can... everything about this book was essentially perfect for me uh, and to my taste, whereas the play uh, was so intelligent and cerebral and referential of other things that I wasn't aware of that it went over my head. So it's really interesting reading something from Tannehill that um, was more accessible for me and I highly recommend the book. If you've read The Listeners I'd love to know what you thought, what are your favorite moments. Uh, if you haven't tried the audiobook I highly recommend it. If you've tried both, I'd be interested to see what your experience was um, between the audiobook and the physical, what you prefer and for what reason. And um, I think that's it. I will speak to you next video and hope to hear from you. Bye.